Hello everyone and um, welcome to Agile Tech and um, in this video we're going to be looking at um, sensors okay which is in chapter 2 of input and output devices in fact essentially a sensor is part of an input device and we're going to look at it but before we look at sensor there's a need for you for me to go back to chapter 1 now if you have been following me on this series and I pray you've been following me on it. <laughs> it's actually exciting. Um, you see, you see in chapter one that we have what we call the analog and digital data, and it's very very important that we look at it. Okay, so I'm just going to switch back to it a minute, and then we can just look at it. Trust me, it's going to be very very exciting when we do it. Um, I think I have it somewhere. No, nope, it should be somewhere around here. Okay, now we, when we look at the analog and digital data, essentially what the computer understands is machine language, right? It's right there. If you need an in-depth knowledge of this, um, I would recommend you go to chapter one of um, the textbook. It's right there on my YouTube channel. Um, and then you see how, how I was able to explain the analog and digital, how the converter is being done and um, what, what um, the analog data does in terms of measuring the physical, um, the image of physical data, as well. How it's been sent to the computer. So if you if you need an understanding about because it's very very important, it's a, it's a baseline for sensors, and you need to understand that. So you just quickly check that on my YouTube channel. Probably you can pause this and quickly listen to it. Um, it's one of the um, um, I, I put them in series in parts, and you can just quickly just go to it and listen to it, watch it, and then place then. Come back to this and, and trust me it, it, it will all make sense okay now let's go to the sensors now when we look at sensors we see that sensor deals with what we call um apart from we see that analog sensors but they are invariably they are input devices right because why do i see they're input devices it is more or less a device that is used to what input data to a computer okay yes to a computer and this data is a measurement in some of um, physical quantities, right? And that is um, that continuous changing, okay? That continuous changing. So invariably, your sensors are um, measuring physical um, elements, okay? Like temperatures, um, um, light, essentially, that's what it does, right? And these physical quantities are analog in nature, okay? Now, here is a, here's the problem because computer now understands what we call machine language, digital. The, there is a need for a kind of a converter, okay? It's too much. Hold on to this. It's all going to make sense. Now, sensors are used in monitoring, right, and control applications. Now, we have various types of sensors, right, uh, used in application. It all depends on what you want to use it for, okay? And I would highly recommend that you stick to, for students, you stick to the sensors given in the textbook because literally there are so many sensors, literally so many sensors. Like I said, there are various types of sensors that are used depending on the application. And we're going to see um, in a minute, in a table that's been given to us right in the textbook, um, the kind of sensors and what are their use. Take for instance, for example, you are monitoring the data sent to the computer, right? And it's often transferred directly to a special package. And you need a kind of sensor to actually do that. But you need to know this, that why sensors are a kind of, um, they're analog sensors, right? Um, they measure physical quantities, which are analog in nature. They're analog in nature. And um, there is a need for that conversion because what the computer understands is binary. And that simply means that you need a converter to convert it from um, the sensor to the computer. And that is done with what we call um, a conversion, what we call an ADC, right? Which is the analog to digital converter, right? And that is simply sending those physical um, data right, to the computer, and once that has been processed, it is now sent back, right, um, to the user, and that is now done with um, a, um, a digital 
to analog converter, uh, converter right i said it's all going to make sense if you listen um to um, the analog and digital um data video it's all going to make sense trust me now let, let's look at the table briefly let's look at the tables um of the type of sensors right here in the test book now we look at temperature okay and what are the applications of temperature right the temperature sensor now for temperature you're measuring a kind of temperature like you want to see the temperature in the room you want to see the temperature literally in any um in different applications you want to see it in your automatic washing machine you want to know if the clothes are dried or if it's still in the process of you, you still need to wash it more and more the machine needs to still go on in making sure that the desk is is off you need it in a central heating system where um um where you have uh, the ACs, is it cool enough, right? If it's cool enough, the AC should go off. If it's hot enough, then the AC should come in. Is it in an automatic glass house when you have a plant and uh, then you want to know if the temperature is enough so that probably you could add in um, what you add in your plants, water, and you have it. Is it in oven? Is, it, is, is, is the food hot enough? Is the water you're putting, is it, whatever you're doing, you know, is you hot enough to know that that temperature, once it gets to that temperature, it goes up. The next one is the pressure sensor. Pressure, right? It is used in alarm systems. It's used in washing machines, it's used in robotics, it's used in environmental monitoring, very, very important, right? Um, uh, we have light. I, I, I won't believe everybody can relate to this, right? Everyone can relate to it. So it's used for light, we can use it in automatic glass house, right? Also, there's also um, a video on the specimen paper that was done. You could go through it. There were questions coming out from it for 2023, and probably that will also give you more understanding on that as well. Okay, so it's used in an automatic glass house, right? It's used in automatic doors. For example, you, you're going into, um, uh, you want to open your door, the light comes on. Or something like that. If it's at night, um, um, into the alarm system, somebody comes in, the light pops up and makes that that sound. Um, not it gives that light to show that oh, who is this? Who is coming in? Okay. Um, um, the the street lighting control. So when it's when it's night, the street light comes on. When it's daytime, the street light goes off. We have the sound or the acoustic, and it's also used into that system. When light comes on, it makes that sound. Right, so if somebody's coming in that, you know, that sound, you know, that, that alarm sound it makes. And, you know, if it's a false alarm, you can probably um, turn it off manually. And then we have um, the monitoring liquids and power flow in pipe. So, for example, if the, your tank is filled up, then it gives that kind of like a boss sound, right? A boss sound, boss, right? B U Z Z, right? It boss sound to tell you, okay, what are you filled up, right? You need to probably turn this off. Okay, um, yeah, very, very important, right? Or if there's a light coming, if there's a light, um, it, 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 it gives you that indicator that, okay, that indication that there's power supply, right? Um, the next one is your humidity and moisture, which is using um, in an automatic glass house to know um, the content um, of the, the sound. Um, you, you know this, right? The sound, uh, um, um, uh, the plants as much as possible. Is it moist? Right, you check the humidity and um, environmental monitoring. Right, all the biology students, right, probably you're listening to this, makes sense to you in factories uh, where the moisture levels are crucial uh, as much as possible. We have the pH, le uh, the pH sensor, which is using automatic glass house, um, chemical processes, environmental monitoring as much as possible. Um, let's look at the advantages of using the sensor. Quickly, advantage and disadvantage, we're going to look at it um, right here. Now, we'll talk about the advantages real quick. We'll look at the advantages. What we are simply looking at is it is more accurate, right? It is more accurate um, in reading. It's more accurate in um, reading, um, uh, more accurate reading taken when compared to human operators because it's a sensor. Remember, it's more accurate. You're taking um, in real time right um uh, these data and of course readings are continuous okay so no breaking in the monitoring so it's monitoring the situation it's giving you feedback as much as possible you're monitoring the gas plant you, you, you you're monitoring the temperature if there's any slight change it gives you a warning 
this is what is happening. Because it is continuous in nature, any necessary actions that the control system or warning will be initiated immediately, right? Because it is continuous. It's not like humans. Human can monitor for a time and probably get tired or even, you know, um, sleep off because you need to rest, right? But this is a machine here. So it's, it's measuring all this and it's giving feedback to the system and it's just, the system is looking at it with the preset information uh, before you know there is that warning, um, that initiation process that is taking um, effect immediately, okay? Systems can be automatic. Automatic in the sense that it removes the need for any form of human intervention. It is very, very important, especially in a, a kind of hazardous um, precise control or monitoring where right? the sensor is very, very, very important. That's where it comes in, right? Very, very important. Disadvantage on the other hand is that 40 sensors can give um, a spurious result. If the sensors are 40, it will give you a, a bad result. It's, it's the same thing. If it's a bad program, you get a bad result, right? So we can put, we can, we can list them out as a disadvantage, right? For example, sensors on the rear bumper of a car that monitors what obstacle. Now, if this becomes dirty, they might not either identify any obstacle or give a continuous alarm, right? So we're looking at it in the form of car. For example, sensors on cars, right? For example, you, you know, we're probably trying to park, right? You, you see it on the screen that it shows you the distance between what where you should be and um, where you need to park, the, the proximity. And if it's too close, it gives you that sign. But if it's for any reason, if there's a dirt on it, on that sensor, and it's not able to give you the accurate reading, then probably that becomes, um, that becomes, um, um, uh, very, very not so good because then again if there's anything wrong with the sensor if it's 40 without you knowing then um it, it would definitely give you a wrong um reading most sensors are analog okay so therefore they require conversions using the edc is a disadvantage because you still need to convert that data to the computer base and back and forth and there's it thank you very much for watching and please do want to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's going to be very helpful. We look at people one, we look at people two, we look at people three, we look at literally everything on ICT, IGCC, ICT, to ensure that that ISTAR is, is yours for the taking. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.